Hello and welcome to a brand new episode of Gadget Nation and me, Adam Carruthers. Brand new episode means brand new content, brand new gadgets, and brand new news to keep you updated on what's happening in the world of technology. Are you as excited as I am right now? In case you're wondering where we are, Ministry of Coffee here in the Solaris area of Montchiara. I'm looking forward to going, sit down, enjoying a drink, and starting the show. Samsung released the Curve soundbar along with the M3, the latest addition to the wireless audio multi-room product line offering powerful sound options. TV matching curved soundbar can be used as a stand or mounted type for wall-mounted TV with 55 and 65-inch Samsung curved UHD TVs. In addition to its design, the curved soundbar also delivers immersive sound and user-friendly functions. Malaysian witnessed the inaugural launch of Gramas, a brand synonymous to luxury premium iPhone casings in Japanese market. Gramas specializes in creating casing using only genuine raw materials, bringing only for iPhone 6 and 6 Plus, coincides with the recent arrival of the coveted iPhone series. Logitech X300 is a wireless speaker designed for mobility and performance. Engineered for wide range sound, the drivers are especially angled for a more expansive sound spectrum. Can be connected from any Bluetooth device and enjoy up to 5 hours of continuous play without recharging, giving you a mobile theatre sound experience. Thank you. Sorry, just ordering my coffee. Okay, I did promise you some new gadgets, etc. And probably my favourite category of things, apart from game consoles, which don't come out too often, would have to be mobile phones, because I love mobile phones. I'm addicted to them, so I got really excited to check out not one, but two brand new phones from different brands. Very exciting indeed. Okay, let's check out some phones. Let's get straight down to business. Two different brands, two very, very different phones. One is here to my right, your left, which is from HTC, the Butterfly 2. We'll get to that shortly, because I want to focus first on what we have here. This very odd-shaped phone, something rather unique, something which takes a lot of getting used to. This is the BlackBerry Passport. Yeah, and I, I have to say, when I first picked it up, when I first saw it, I was like, wow, it's wider than it is longer. This is very odd. It, it takes a fair amount of getting used to. Just looking at it right now, I'm sure you may have seen pictures of it, you may have seen it on Instagram, people might have it, your friends might have it or something. But you have to say, it really does stand out amongst the current trend of phones all looking like this, either bigger or smaller. And it has a very, very premium feel about it. It feels really nice. We got this back right here, which is very, very smooth, like velvet. And the keyboard doesn't take up much space at all, as you can see right there. It's just letters, obviously. There's no space for numbers, etc. in terms of the actual layout. And I'm very, very impressed with what BlackBerry have done with this device. The question is why? Let's delve in. Firstly, let's talk about what's actually on offer in terms of the exterior, apart from this fantastic screen at the side. We've got the volume rockers, we've got this dedicated action button right here, which kind of brings up their version of Siri or Katana for the Windows devices, etc. At the top, it's just the power button, or again, just take a look at the very classy designs. And we've got the headphone jack, there's nothing there. And here, we've obviously got the speaker grill, and we've got the charging point right there. That's it, USB. Now, as for the back, there's a little metal bar across here where the camera is. In fact, this top part can be taken off if you just pop it like such. Then you've got the nano SIM card and you've got the SD card holder right there. There's no way you can take out the battery. So for those of you who like to carry around spare batteries, etc., it's definitely something to think about. Now, the biggest selling point about it has to be the screen, the square screen right here. Now, if we're talking uh, pixel density, this is better than whatever we have from the Samsung Galaxy S5. It's better than the HTC One M8. It's really, really good. We're talking 453 PPI. That means everything on this looks very, very sharp. No matter how small the text is, etc. 
the biggest asset that the BlackBerry Passport has, in my opinion. Underneath the hood in all of this, they're still pretty high-end specs. I believe that it's a 2.2 gigahertz Qualcomm Snapdragon 801 processor, 3 GB of RAM, 32 GB internal storage as well. So there's lots to love in that aspect. Now on the back, the camera, it's never been one of the fortes of BlackBerry and it does just an okay job. I mean, yeah, it's nothing really to shout about in my opinion. Now the keyboard itself is a little bit weird in the sense there's not much that you can type with it apart from the letters. If you want anything else, once I open up a messaging app, I'll slide it up and then you can actually see uh, extension of the keyboard on the screen itself. Now in terms of weight, it feels just right, 196 grams. Very, very cool, very nifty, very impressive what BlackBerry have offered here. But at the end of the day, ecosystems. More on that later. Let's move on to the next device right there. So, from the passport, from BlackBerry, we move on to this. Ah, very, very nice. Let me just swap this around. As you can probably tell, what we have is the HTC Butterfly 2. Very nifty phone, and just looking at it, it's very reminiscent of the previous Butterfly, and also the recent M8, from the shape and design of the M8, as you can see, to the polycarbonate, but very smooth matte finishing of the butterfly of the past. So a good combination, a good amalgamation of the two. And there's a lot to love about this phone. It's very, very, very nifty. It's very powerful. It's quad core Snapdragon 801, just like that one. 2 GB of RAM, slightly less than the BlackBerry Passport, but it should be able to smoothly go by for all of your daily use. Now, just looking at the body, it's a unibody, so everything is just unaccessible for you in terms of the back. But one thing I do like is the fact that instead of searching around for, you know, for a little pin, or if you look inside the box, it'll have a little pin for you to pop open to change the SIM card or the micro SD. At least with HTC, it's just a flap either side for you to pull out. So one of them obviously is for the micro SD, the other one is for your SIM card, and they go in either side. But that's about it in terms of accessibility. Let me just close that up there and there. And apart from that, there's really not much else. I mean, obviously, we've got the power button, we've got the IRF there, receiver at the top. But just like the other M8, we have this dual camera system, which works in the same way, whereby the second camera can actually capture the depth and you can do some post editing on it. If you play to the HTC One M8, you'll know exactly what that's about. However, crucially, unlike using ultra pixels, this one is actually using the 13 megapixel camera. So for me, that in itself is a huge advantage because I've kind of gotten bored of that usual ultra pixel thing. I just find it, it lacks punch with the camera, etc. But having the dual focus there also does make a nice little difference. Now in terms of battery, just over 3000 uh, mAh, about 3002, so you should be able to last a good day and a half on regular usage. Calls, etc. were crisp and clear. The front camera was also pretty nifty. The question is, what do I think about these two in closing in comparison? Hmm. So what do I think about these two phones in general? Well, there's a lot to love. The price point for one is not too expensive. In fact, they're only 100 ringgit apart, 2399 for the BlackBerry. This is 2299 for the HTC. HTC, I should add, is also waterproof. I know a lot of people are sticklers for that, and it's something which they look for in their camera phones. So you'll be glad to know that's one addition here. Now, everything else though, it's the ecosystem. That's what it comes down to. I mean, BlackBerry versus Google, it's really no contest. If that is an issue for you, then by all means, check this out because it's really nice. This is a flagship device, a flagship phone for BlackBerry. The HTC uh, Butterfly 2 is not a flagship device, but it still packs quite a punch nonetheless. In terms of price, it's great. A lot to love about both, but it really is down to the individual needs. Can you use a rectangular phone like this? I don't know, I'm not sure I could, but maybe I could get used to it. But this one feels more traditional in the sense that it fits into my hand like most of the other phones out there. Hard to make up my mind between the two, but definitely worth checking out. So do let us know what you think about these two bad boys. Temukan dia yang kamu rindukan di line fine alumni.